Peter Rose along with Currency Trading. It's uh, mid-March of 2022, kind of an overcast day. It's going to start raining out any minute. Um, so look, you're, um, you're in a profitable position. What now? What do you, what, what do, you do now? Um, the problem is that most people start out thinking that trading is that question. And it's not. There are three phases to the life cycle of a currency position. You start with entry analysis, position management, and then you move into exit methodology. And that middle phase, that position management, is what everybody seems to be focusing on. But guess what? If you don't have good exit methodology, you're going to get stopped out. Or the thing is going to go so far negative in your direction that your whole analytical process is going to be screwed up as to what it is that you're doing. You'll come to all kinds of things to blame. You know, you had hemorrhoids, the dog pooped on the floor, you're sick, uh, you know, you got a bad trading system, somebody told you some bad stuff and you followed it and it doesn't work, or your signal service doesn't work. <clears throat> you get distracted from the thread of the trade. In software engineering, a thread is a is a, a, a line of processing that continues on. And you can have multiple threads going at the same time if you're good. But most of the time, for low-end computers, you have one process that, 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 that can handle major processing. For example, the um, video editing software that I use, that just hogs up my memory like crazy. So if I'm trying to do some software development and I've got a web server up and I've got my trading uh, development platform up and I'm running my SQL database server, <laughs> that, that poor that poor video editing software just bleh, it just it doesn't go anywhere or it's already gobbled up so much memory uh, that none of the other stuff that I'm trying to do is going to work and so if you if you get trying to do too many things. And simply by not focusing on the entry analysis or the entry stage when you should be, and you're splitting your attention there with uh, uh, the position management phase, nothing's going to get done right. It's going to be particularly de deadly for you, and you're not ever going to get to the position where you say, I'm in a profitable trade, so what do I do now? You're not going to get there. Well, let's make the assumption that you do get there. You have to ask yourself, did I get there because of my skill, or did I get there because I'm in the right environment for the particular system that I'm trading, or did I get there because I know how to trade? The answer to that question lies in your win-to-loss ratio over um, about 100 trades when you've been trading consistently. So that'll take you like 300 trades in order to develop a solid win-to-loss ratio. Oh my God, Peter, what am I supposed to do? I can't even get it. I've traded it 100 times and I can't figure it out. Well. That's the problem. That's why 90% of the traders are going to lose. It's a sophisticated uh, game. It's not complicated, but it's sophisticated. Uh, and it's mostly because you're screwing with your emotions rather than <laughs> just dealing with the facts of the playing field that are in front of you. Um, let's assume that <clears throat> you have a, a good enough entry position, uh, entry analysis um, that you feel pretty good about your entries, that you're getting uh, more of your trades into, into the profit zone. You're just not getting enough profit out of them as you might as you might want. And that's really the second concern that we are dealing with here is that um, one is how do I construct a, a, a viable entry trade entry process to get to the point where I have a trade that's running in 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 profit. You know, to transition from the um, entry analysis stage into that position management stage, there's a very fine line as to how, when that transition happens. And if you don't understand that and you don't know that, um, you're gonna be in you're gonna be in trouble because you're gonna blend the two together. Um, it's really simple, but if you don't know that, how do you how do you break the, the, the two the two pieces up so you've got two separate problems to solve instead of one and a half? <laughs> Or, or blending the, the two of them together. There's a very specific um, way to define when you transition from 
your entry phase into your position management phase. So let's say you're successfully able to do that, and now you have a position that you're managing. What do you do? Well, position management means you manage the position, that you do one or two things. You project an existing profit by either exiting or by setting a stop so that you've, you've, you've quantified your, your uh, takeout point. Uh, or number two, you're going to let the trade run, and you can do that in two ways. You can let it run with the existing uh, lot size that you have, or you can start to stage in. If you're going to let it run with the existing trade size, that becomes fairly simple. You just determine for yourself what the volatility of the price is at that particular point so that you don't get taken out by a, a normal retracement, you know, like the little dig down as, as the price goes up, for example. That might be 5 pips, it might be 20 pips, whatever it is. But once you are in a, a trade that's profitable as a day trader, uh, with a, an initial um, hopeful profit target of um, anywhere from 8 to maybe 15 pips of expectation on that one trade because you're not going to catch more than that before you have a retracement. So that, I mean, if you're trading up on the daily chart, then your, your um, retracement could be 60 or 80 pips. So you have to adjust your, your trailing stop according to all that until that price gets much further up where even if you set that stop down there, you've made a better than um, predicted day. So if you've been, uh, if your initial profit target on entry, let's say was 10 pips, and the price has gone beyond that, you've brought your stop up to break even, so you're running uh, 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 position free at this point, but you have a 10 pip profit, and the thing continues to climb up, you don't really have any decisions to make until it's gone a certain distance beyond that um, point where um, one of two things has happened. You've either had a minor retracement, it's recovered and it's gone on. At that point, you back the truck up and you load everything into it and away you go. Or you feel that the momentum of price has is increasing, that it, that it isn't stagnant or whatever. It's very the momentum is based on the size of the current, and I've said this a lot of times, size of the current candle as, as, a, as a, a differential to the current ATR. And there's more to it than that, but um, that's the long and the short of it, is, is if you're experiencing increasing um, momentum, then you would back up the truck and load up on more lots. But you want to do that, if you're going to stage in, you're going to want to do that early in the staging process as opposed to later, because the later that you wait, the higher your uh, cost of purchases are, you know, higher, higher, higher your cost of goods, and the less of a retracement it will take in order for all that to be stopped out for uh, a loss, potentially, because uh, let's say that you're you start with one lot and you trail it up and you go, oh, I'm going to back the truck up and you dump five lots on there. You're at the, let's say, at the, at the level 20 and you, you, you went in and took your trade at, uh, at uh, 10. And so now you've gone 10 pips up and you're on one, you're on one uh, lot and you go up 10 pips and you buy five more. Well, what's your average cost? Your average cost is right where your where your current price is. All that has to do is go down five pips, and you've lost. You've, you're you're in negative territory, man. You've lost a. Um, you've lost a. You're you're in negative land. However, if you'd have gone in with one pip at uh, or one one lot at uh, ten pips, and then. Um, one lot at uh, 13 and one lot at 15 and three lots at uh, 18 and the prices continue to go up, you're still in danger there because that three lot thing that you added at the end has brought that average up. But if that momentum is really starting to take off now, th then you want to dump it in, let that thing go up, bring your, pro uh, your, your um, take profit point so that you've got three or four pips 
of profit, no matter how far close that thing is, you've got to bring that up to, to give yourself a profit. You don't want to let it go negative. or You don't even want it to go, oh, I, I broke even. Because you've worked so hard to manage your money to get, that, to get it to, uh, to be involved in a high momentum movement. You don't want to not get paid for that. So you want to get paid at least a pip or two pips or three pips. You know, if you if you got five pips at that point, three pips, you know, that's 150 bucks. So uh, that's nothing to sneeze about. That People don't make that much money uh, in a day. You know, if you're making um, $20 an hour in an eight-hour day, you can make 160 bucks. Uh, that's at 20 bucks an hour. Minimum wage is 15. Um, you know, that's a lot of money, 150 bucks. So, um, you have to be constantly aware of where you're uh, adding more juice into that trade and being very aware of where your stop is in relationship to where that average price is. So once that, once that um, price continues on into profit beyond the entry level, and you clearly have a definition for when you're in the position management stage because, God, if you go out, if you're not ready to transition into position management and you start doing all that stuff and you're really in the entry phase, boy, you could really get screwed up on that too. Um, so you have to be really, really careful. Now, in the mentoring and stuff that I, that I do when I work with people, I show them how to blend the position management phase into the exit methodology phase just to make things simple. But to be really simple, um, you have to have the definition between the di di difference between stuff that you do for position management and stuff that you do for exit methodology. But in truth, you, you begin to blend those things together once you gain more experience. Of course, if you don't know about the full life cycle of a currency pair, and you don't know how to transition between the different phases or when those things happen, or you don't consider that it's important uh, to have a specific set of rules um, for the three major conditions that are going to occur for you during position management, um, you're going to have a hard time um, getting that position to pay as much as you're going to be able to get out of it. Now, you can get some out of it, but you can get as much as you can get out of it if you have the correct rules in place to do that. But I guess the, the, the premise of the video here, or the purpose of the video, is okay, I, I'm in, I'm in, I have a profitable position, what do I do now? You have to manage that position and you have to understand what that means. That doesn't mean moving the stop up or, uh, or exiting or whatever. It isn't quite that easy. It is simple, but there are three or four different things, um, events, let's call them, that you need to account for in that uh, position management realm that you're currently in. So be really careful when you're uh, thinking that you're in a position management phase and you're not still in the, in the entry phase because you you get kind of screwed up on that. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, throw me an email. Very tough for me to comment uh, uh, enough to help you out in the comments section. And uh, you know what? If you take that extra time to email me, you deserve the right to have a little bit more information given to you than just somebody who's going to make a comment and want the secret keys to, <laughs> to the <laughs> thing done. Comments are for, thank you very much for the nice video, and I'm glad to see that, that blah, 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 blah is happening. Or, no, I don't really care for your approach and whatever. That's what the comments are for. And again, I have to caution you, watch out for the phony uh, replies that may be coming from me or the other YouTube channels that you're watching on. Be very careful about reading replies from the, from the owner of the video because there's a lot of scams going on that, uh, uh, that will get you, <laughs> get you in more trouble than a bad trade. Okay, well, have a Peter Rose along with currency trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.